which one of these programs that I have in train will give me the most benefit against that new budget that I have. So I need to be able to understand the business benefits there when I do those, those comparisons. Once I do decide to go and complete my build, my package of all, everything that's within my service design package, and then when I do decide to go and transition out into the run world, I'll take my service and I'll use change and release and configuration and it'll be transitioned out into my run world. Now once I'm in my run world, I still want to take a portfolio perspective of all the different services that I have that I currently running. So what I like to do is have a look at those different services and rate them relative to one another. So if I have a dozen different services that IT is running on behalf of the business, I then want to be able to compare them against one another. Now I want to use this comparison with relative bubble sizes and colours to be able to tell me which business services is offering me the most value. Now, here's the funny thing. Most IT organisations talk about the value in the run world with the aggregate of quality metrics. And that's generally things like service levels, availability, capacity, and those sort of things. Things that we instrument and monitor from an IT perspective. So these could be aggregated into quality. So I want to know what, based on the quality of the service, where does it get placed by way of the size of the bubble or the position of the bubble. I also want to know cost. How much does it actually cost me to run this service? Now, the third parameter that I want to uh, evaluate against is, once again, value. Now, this is where IT runs into a little bit of an issue again, because IT generally talks about value as quality versus cost. So it says, if I take the cost and the quality, what's the value that I'm getting? The business doesn't look at that way. The business looks at it differently. So how, from an IT perspective, can we get that value as a business metric? The way we get it is from going back and looking at those forward-looking metrics that we had before, and now make them current metrics. Because we've already asked the business what they consider the objectives and what's going to drive the value of this service. So now what we need to do is go back to those ones that were forward-facing metrics to start with when they were talking from a demand perspective, and now we want to go and measure them. How, how much an increase in market share has there been? How many more customers do you have? How much decrease in churn? So we can then bring in the third dimension of value. Once I have these three things, I can go and say, for example, this service here is high on quality, low on cost, and high in value. So I now have a good rating of saying this is, this is a high value service. Where this one over here, I can see that it isn't making much of those criteria. So it's lower value. So once I start seeing that there's a lower value, I can start monitoring it for the trends. If the trend keeps increasing, showing that it's getting lower value, it's having more cost. How many organisations sitting there today listening to this have services running on old pieces of hardware that are virtually unsupportable, old software that you're paying premium warranty for, and you're having lots of incidents coming in against it, and IT just wants to kill that service off because they don't think that it's uh, delivering value, where the business doesn't want to kill it off because they are not carrying any of those costs with it. Once we start understanding the business service in the run world, my cost, my quality, and the business value, I can then start having discussions with my customer about this is not providing any more business value. What you may need to do is you may need to go and modify and improve it, or one of the hardest decisions that IT has to make, you may need to go and retire it. Without having 
factual based information about my quality, my value and my cost. I can't do that. So now, all of a sudden, I'm looking in my run world, I'm looking at these business services that are costing me this, they have this level of quality, this is the value. How do I compare against one another? And which ones do I look, do I want to either retire or do I want to modify and make better? And by being able to have that discussion, all of a sudden, I have this closed loop coming back to the business because I can start feeding back to the business, saying to them, you know this business service is just costing us a lot, you're not getting a lot of value out of it, let's think about retiring it. And the earlier that we can help the business understand when they need to do those things, the better they can budget and prioritise it. If we don't provide that sort of information going back to the business, the flow will always be coming from the business saying, I want you to do this. One of the things that IT should be doing is enabling the business by helping them make these decisions. So as you can see, as the service portfolio life cycle goes across the whole life cycle of the service, I now have the ability to say from a demand perspective, I want to have forward looking metrics to say what the value is. Once I'm in my build world, I have metrics all around about dollars, times and functionality, the traditional domain of uh, IT. And once I run into, put a transition into the run world, I also want to have those value metrics that cost, quality and value to the business. And what I can do, I can use a lot of instrumented tools as an on-ramp. My systems monitoring, my network monitoring tools, my customer experience tools to be able to monitor those quality things. And I can have my financial management tools, my asset tools to be able to go and tell me the cost. And once again, I need to go back to the business and find those business metrics so I can evaluate those three things. This example I've given is an example of a very mature organization doing this. Most organizations, it will take them some time to get to this position. So the big question we often talk about is where do I start? I can't just go and say, I want to go and take all my services and put it into my service portfolio management process and let's go with that because that will have the same result as when many organizations said, let's go and discover everything in my infrastructure and stick it in a CMDB. And if those organizations were lucky, they only had two or three learning exercises until they actually started thinking about getting it right. So how do you start? One way you start is thinking about some of the on-ramps that you have. From an on-ramp perspective, I can start capturing my tactical demand in service catalog. Once I start then thinking about moving into capturing my strategic demand, I can then move into my portfolio products that, that do that. When I have my business services in my run world, I need my service sets to be able to monitor things like number of incidents, sales, changes. I need my availability and systems monitoring tools to tell me what the availability is. I need my customer experience tools to talk about transaction loads and customer experience and aggregate that into quality. And I also need my IT financial tools to give me those costs. So there's a number of different on-ramps that I can start. And once I then start bringing all these things together, I can then do my end-to-end -end life cycle of the analysis. Where do you start today? The way you start today is you pick a date. You go three months down the road, four months down the road. Once that date comes in, I have my process set up. All new business services must go through my service portfolio management process. So I can start doing this evaluation against them. And what you'll find over time, I'll have in from this day all my new services coming and I'll also have all my critical ones within it. And over time, I'll have a mix where I have services that are not under the management of service portfolio management and those that are. As we start retiring services and moving them out and bringing new services in, the mix should change. The percentage should go up of more and more services being under service portfolio management as those older services get retired and pushed out. So you don't have to bite this off all at once. You can take a very strategic view of how you implement it and then have tactical point-by-point -point solutions until you bring it all together and then you have your overarching service management portfolio. I hope you've enjoyed this session. Thank you for your time.